Welcome to episode nine of This Stuff Works podcast, powered by Echelon Front. And we're excited here today to have a great guest with us, Denver Wetton, who is the uh, the founder and president of Dagen Construction. Uh, he's been uh, a longtime trooper in the game and as a leader who lives and breathes these principles and has built that into the culture of his team at Dagen uh, that we're, we're honored to be a, a partner with. Uh, and work alongside, and uh, certainly proud of uh, all the success that, that you've achieved, Denver. And uh, and and I know you give credit to your team, and you've brought this into your team, and brought so many members of your team uh, in, into our, our training programs. Uh, but it's awesome to see that you guys are continually proving that this stuff works with implementing these principles in the construction world, um, and uh, in in what what you do every day, and the success that you've achieved. So, thanks so much for making the trip to Texas from uh, Phoenix and uh, it's great to have you here on the podcast with us. Yeah, thanks. I'm I'm uh really humbled really humbled to be here and and uh, to be able to talk a little bit about about our team and and about some of the things that worked and um one of the one of the uh things that we would hear around the office and in the crews uh even before this podcast come out was this stuff works. And, and so, uh, so it was real appropriate when, uh, when I saw your podcast come out and I was pretty excited to, to be able to have something else to listen to. We were, uh, we were kind of debating about the name of this, you know, over and over again. And, uh, Sarah Armstrong, our first guest on here, uh, and it puts out so much great information, you know, from her perspective on, on every, every Extreme Ownership Academy live session said we should name it This Stuff Works. And it started coming from other troopers as well, that hashtag This Stuff Works that people talk about in the chat. And what I liked about that was the fact that when Jocko would give me some guidance when we first started working together, tasking a bruiser, uh, I, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd be trying to figure something out myself or trying to get the team to do cer certain things. And uh, I'd be frustrated and he'd come over and say, hey, why don't you try this? Sometimes I'd want to push back on that. I'm like, okay, he hasn't steered me wrong, you know, uh, yet. Let me just try that. And I would try it. I'd be like, dang, that this stuff actually works. Uh, I, I might have used some expletives in there when I was uh, describing it back in my SEAL team days. But it, it's the same concept. I would say that all the time um, as I would take and apply these principles. And I realized that actually works. It actually, th that gets the team aligned. That actually gets us moving in the direction that solves these challenges. Um, and so I, I think it was... Uh, appropriately named as that as that came out and that was suggested I was like let's let's go with it I think one of the first times that uh, that that I heard that at, at the office was after we had done a training on extreme ownership and we'd gone through the five steps of how to take ownership and and we talked about um, even when we have a problem with a customer you know lots of times we're trained to uh, you know don't take ownership because then we're going to get stuck you know having to pay a bunch of money to fix something or, or, or we're going to get uh, a, a delay, you know, on the job. And, 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 uh, and we said, no, we're going to take ownership and, 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 and we're, we're gonna, we're going to follow these steps. And we, and one of my guys had a meeting with the customer where, um, normally we would have, we would have tried to come up with some excuses and, 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 and justify why we made the decisions that we made. And, and he went in and said, no, this is, this is hundred percent my fault. And, and, you know, these are the consequences and, and, and this is the problem that happened. And, 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 it, and it's, it's my, my fault. And, and this is what I'm going to do to, this is what I'm going to do to, to, to fix it. And, and, uh, and, uh, and the customer totally, totally changed, totally changed. Instead of it being a confrontational type of a type of a meeting, it was, it was more of a collaboration and, 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 and he came back and he's like, man, like this stuff works, man. Like this is crazy. It does work. It's awesome. Uh, it, it's so hard to put that ego in check and, and admit that something's your fault. But when you take ownership and you can see that when somebody can see that you're going to actually take action to fix it, um, then they're going to react in a totally different way. If you're making excuses and point fingers and casting blame, because then they know no one's going to take action to do it. So that's an awesome example. You, you have a fascinating background, Denver, and uh, about where you grew up, uh, how you grew up, and, and how you got to where you are now. Why don't you just talk about yourself and where you came from? So um, I grew up in, in a place called Colonia Juarez in Chihuahua, Mexico, about uh, 200 and 
50 miles south of El Paso, Texas. Um, my family uh, uh, owned cattle ranches and, and uh, orchards, and we farmed. And uh, that's, that's where I grew up. Um, I grew up speaking English at home and, and Spanish everywhere else. And uh, um, graduated high school in Mexico. Uh, and and uh, when I graduated, I, I moved out to Arizona to, to start going to school. And uh, um, went to, went to uh, a community college to kind of catch up on everything and, 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 and get the system figured out a little bit and, and then transferred over to um, University of Arizona and got a, got a degree in mechanical engineering. What was it like growing up on a cattle ranch in Mexico? It was awesome, you know. Um, we, we, we had a, a quite a few ranches, uh, big ranches. Uh, with with a lot of cattle, you know, we 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 branded about two thousand head of calves every summer, and so uh, um, I, I was the oldest of uh, um, my 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 siblings and, and and my immediate cousins that lived around us uh, down there in Mexico, and so and so I was kind of the leader of the pack, and and uh, we just had a great time. We had a great time uh, work, learning how to work, working hard. Uh, very very remote places, and uh, um, and and working working with family. You know, my my best friends growing up were were, were my brothers and my cousins. That's awesome. That it had to be a, a a neat way to grow up. Definitely, I think that's probably uh, certainly shaped who you are. You know, in in, in a big way, and and your work ethic and uh, your ability to build relationships, which I know have come into play in, in such a huge way with your success um, at uh, at Dagan. Um, so how did, how did you go from, you know, you talked about graduating from, uh, uh, from college with a mechanical engineering degree. How did you, how did you make it into the construction world as a result of that? Yeah. So, so, um, right out of, right before I graduated, uh, uh with my, with my engineering degree, I, I went and did an internship at ATK Thiokol, uh, doing the solid rocket motors for the space shuttle. And it was, it was super cool. It was super cool. Uh, there, there was some really neat stuff happening and, 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 and stuff to see. Uh, but the, the, the structure that I saw the engineers working under where, you know, they were in the same position for years and years and years, and they just had s slow increases in, in incremental increases in pay and just uh, was way too structured for me. <laughs> I came back from that internship uh, with a job offer. But uh, pretty, pretty, uh, um, um, pretty down about what I chose to study because uh, I didn't want to be a I didn't want to be an engineer that just sat in an office all day, and and uh, luckily uh, I did a lot of interviewing and I found a company uh, that that um, w was a cement manufacturer. That, that had a leadership development program right out the gate. And, um, and they were looking for engineers to work in their cement plants. And, and uh, they were a Mexican-owned company where I could uh, use my, my uh, 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 dual co cultural background to, to be able to uh, um, work with them. And, and uh, that, was, that was a real success for, for me out the gate. Um, as far as a career goes, um, I, I learned a lot. Their leadership program was was really, really, really good. Um, that was something that drew you to the company. Was their, their yeah. leadership development program? Yeah, just to be able to continue to learn, to continue to learn and and, and develop. And and uh, I've always had a drive of, of you know how how can I learn more? And and uh, and so to to be able to have that opportunity to to be able to learn right away uh, was, was, was a big bonus for me. And, and it went really well there, you know, to where um, I, I, I started uh, becoming the guy that whenever there was a major problem at one of the 12 cement plants that were located all around the U.S. Um, and they'd have to send engineers up out of Mexico to go work on those problems. Well, I was the in-between guy between the plant management and the and, and, and the people coming up out of Mexico. And, and uh, I'd just get home from one 
one one, one uh, uh, problem outage, and and then I'd be back on the road again within a couple of weeks. And uh, my wife and I uh, had started a family already, and and uh, and it was it was tough being on the road. And so, um, so I ended up jumping ship, uh, even though. You know, financially things were really well, were really good, and and uh, and and I was I, I loved the work, I loved the work, but it wasn't it wasn't a good place to to be able to raise a family, and and so and so we made the decision to move back to Arizona, and and uh, I took a I took a job with a with a home building company, uh, it it huge pay cut. Uh, to be able to to be able to uh, take that job, but um, but I was interested in learning about construction, and so and so I jumped in there and 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 got started in the construction. Talk about how you how you came to uh, to launch Dagan. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. So um, with this home builder, um, this was this was in 2005 when I started with them. And, and then in 2006 was, was the biggest, it was a bit, it was a boom, you know, a lot of, a lot of construction for the company I was working for. Uh, I think our goal that year was, was 8,000 new homes that we were going to build that year just in Phoenix. And, and, uh, in order to be able to accomplish that, uh, the, the company we were working for bought, um, the biggest, uh, subcontractor they had that that performed all their framing and their plumbing and their concrete work and so that they could control all that labor and and have them focus exclusively on on their work and and that was just that was the integration of that company was was a a month and a half after i'd started uh, uh with the home builder and and so because of my background of you know speaking spanish um they they moved me over to that department, and and I kind of started out uh, uh, in the field, you know, trying to figure out what what a house lab was and 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 how that goes together, and and by the end of the year, I was I was uh, running a third of the valley, um, on the on the concrete side of things, and and our team, our team there uh, uh, really did hit a home run. We we had about 250 people on our on on under under me on on our team, and and uh, even though the the challenge was was difficult, uh, the the requirements of our customer was was were really really high as far as quality goes, um, and our and our team came through, and and so I was really proud of them. And then starting the new the the the, the new year in 2007. All of a sudden, there was there was a change in the in the winds. You know, the um, house house housing uh, uh, market started to crash. Uh, there was there was a lot less work for our guys, and and uh, Phoenix was one of the first areas to feel that too. Right? Yeah, we felt it. We we felt it bad, and we felt that we felt that it came on quick, and and uh, so so I started getting uh, pressure from from uh, my superiors that, that we need to start looking at having some layoffs. And, and as we were talking about that, um, I was able to, to um, create some relationships with the department that, that built all the roads and streets, the land development department within the same company. And, and they had a bunch of concrete work that needed to get done. And so um, we, we transitioned some guys over, got some equipment, transitioned some guys over to start Doing sidewalks, curb and gutters, and catch basins, and 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 helping the, the the land development guys be able to to complete their scope, and and I thought it was going real well, and just a few months into it, uh, my boss called me into his office and he said, "Hey, we're we're having a hard time getting our department's having a hard time getting compensated for the work that you guys are doing over in the other department. We we were the same company, but but there was." You know, each department had to had budgets that they had to had to had to stick with, and and they were having a hard time justifying the expenses that that that, that our guys were 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 uh, were incurring. And, and he said, "Man, you're you're making my look my books look bad. Uh, you know, with what you're doing there. Uh, you know, uh, we've decided that you just need to stop that work and and just go ahead and lay those guys off." And 
and uh, that was that was that was devastating because uh, um, I'd, I'd grown real close to my guys, and and they'd come through for me. They did everything I'd asked them to do, and and uh, um, and they were they were good guys with families, uh, bills to pay. Uh, the, 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 the winds and, you know, the, the, the job market was already, you know, everybody's looking for work already. And, and so it wasn't like they were just going to go out and get another job. And, and, uh, and that day I, I, uh, I, I, I decided I was going to quit instead of, instead of firing my guys. And, and when I went and talked to my, my uh, uh, friend over in the land development department, he said, well, you can keep doing this stuff for yourself. You don't, why, don't, why don't you start your own company? I said, well, because I don't have, I don't have the cash to do that. You know, I'd, I'd, uh, we had a little bit in savings, but, but I knew it would take quite a bit of money to start a, start a construction company. And, and uh, um, he encouraged me and, 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 and made a deal with me that, that he would, he would help me get paid, um, quick so that when, when I needed to, when I needed to pay, pay payroll, I'd get, I'd get a check that same day and be able to cash it and be able to pay my guys. And, and as I looked into it more, I, I got quotes for the insurance that it would take, the general liability insurance that it would take. And my down payment was pretty much everything I had in savings. And so, um, I, I uh, decided to jump off the cliff and, and, and put everything, uh, all my savings into uh, uh, starting Dagan Construction, uh, paying the down payment on the insurance for Dagan Construction so we could start it. And, and we started that first, uh, that first Monday with 10 guys. And, and uh, because of the relationships that we had um, with, with our customer, we were able to... Uh, to, to get started and, and, uh, um, it got, it got pretty ugly, you know, as, as, as the economy got worse and worse in, into 2008 and 2009, um, it got tough, but, but, um, I was able to draw from, from a pool of really, really good guys that, that, uh, that, uh, um, did a great job and and uh that, that knew what they were doing and were hard working were loyal and and uh uh just um between all of us we we figured out how to how to how to make it work i think what i what i love so much about that store in denver is just the the idea that you put the team first you know before yourself and you were willing to walk away uh, when your guys, you saw them doing a great job and, and the company that you were, were working for wasn't taking care of them, uh, it was willing to cut them away. And I think so oftentimes, you know, even just a few years ago, we, we were, Jock and I both kind of realized that we say a lot of things leadership wise, but there's some things that we take for granted. And one of the things is that you're going to take care of your people. And that's something that seems real obvious to us, um, but it's not obvious to everybody. And, you know, you take care of your people. Your people are going to take care of you. This is something that you've got to do first and foremost as a leader. And clearly, you were taking care of your people there, and, and, and you launched this company, Dagan Construction, as a means to, to keep them employed, you know, as, as a means to actually put them to work and make sure that they can – can uh can pay their bills and feed their families and and uh and i think that's that's an awesome uh mission right from the get-go right is that you're you're creating an opportunity for people um that you care about um and that clearly we're excited to come and, and work with you and be a part of that mission yeah so um you know luckily also uh my wife was on board with it you know she she uh she 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 kept my books for me and and was a big part in in helping us get started and i think through the through those uh, early years where where uh we didn't take a paycheck we lived we lived on credit cards so we could pay everybody else and and uh we figured out how to how to get our mortgage paid and and and, and how to make things work um you know being able to to have a a, a supportive partner in in my wife was was a really big deal and then, and then just, just the, the quality of guys that, 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 that came on board with me, you know, uh, up, up when I started Dagan construction, I, I only had a year and a half worth of experience in construction. I didn't, 
I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. You know, the first time I had to bid a job, I'd never I'd never bid a job before. I didn't know how to do a takeoff, a construction takeoff, and and what pricing needed to look like. And and uh, we we had a huge learning curve, but but because because my guys were 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 so good at what they what, what they did and and at figuring out solutions to problems um we we just we just got really really close and 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 you know basically took ownership of you know this is what we're doing you know we burned the boats already uh we we have to we have to make this thing work i think that's that's awesome i i mean love that you're bringing that up about your wife uh as well i think uh that's I was talking to somebody the other day about about echelon front and having bootstrapped this company and kind of grown it from the ground up and and uh, I was kind of joking about our our original angel investor is my wife Jenna who's was paying all our bills you know with her job uh, as I took you know a massive uh, pay cut uh, I think I, I made less than half my Navy paycheck which was pretty meager you know when I left the, the Navy in 2011 at for echelon front so um, I think it's it's a takes a huge team effort there and and having that support on the home front of somebody that believes in what you're doing and uh, is encouraging you and and helping you to 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 make ends meet is 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 massive. What uh, is you were telling me this morning too? Like you're the company that you left brought you back in as a subcontractor for some of the work that uh, that picked back up, correct? Yeah. So I'm I'm a big believer in uh, you know we should never burn bridges. You know, um, everything there's, there's just so much value comes from the relationships that we, that we, that we can make, you know, it's, it's all about relationships. And, and, and even though I'd quit, uh, uh, that, that, that home building company to, to, to start my own. And I was subcontracting back to the streets department right away on day one. But, but as, as, um, the home building side of things started to um, uh, they had a they had a summer rush of, of of additional work and they didn't want to hire guys that they knew they were going to have to lay off later and so they came back to me and said hey can can you cover this additional work and you know it was it was it was great it was great to be able to have that work and and to be able to do that work that we were familiar with already and and work back with a lot of our guys from our from our from our original team. And so, so yeah, it's all about the relationships. Relationships are paramount. We talk about that all the time. I think if there's one mantra that we try to live by at Echelon Front, it's that. And, and I think people don't often think strategically about relationships. Um, but I, that's an amazing example of it. We see, we see leaders that, you know, they can't wait to leave a company that they don't like or they, they got sideways with their boss or something. And, you know, if they do burn those bridges – the world is a pretty small place and oftentimes those things come back around where either you're going to have to work alongside that company. Sometimes we've seen it where mergers and acquisitions happen and they're working for, uh, that same person again, you know? And, uh, so it's, it's never good to burn those relationships. Uh, and I think that's, that's a great example of, of, uh, leaving that company starting your own thing and then going right, right back to work a few months later for, for that same company, because you maintain some strong relationships there, which is awesome. And and that's been the key to our success from the from from the very beginning was was um, the 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 size of Dagan Construction right now we we have about 180 employees and and we crank through work we crank through a lot of work and 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 we have to maintain a backlog of you know 20 to 30 million dollars worth of backlog just to be able to keep our guys busy you know. So that they don't run out of work, and and since I started the company, we've never had a salesperson, we've never had a business development person since we started, and we don't put signs on our job sites, and we don't, you know, we don't advertise. Um, the the way that we've been able to continue to get work is by building relationships, and it's our frontline guys, it's our frontline guys that are building those relationships and that are representing and that are doing a good job and that are going above and beyond what's expected of them. And, and, and as, and as they build those relationships, well, that superintendent that we're working for wants us on his next job and he goes up to bat for us. And, and, and that's been, that's the key. That's the key to success. That's outstanding. Let's talk about how you, uh, how you came across extreme ownership 
uh, or Jocko podcast? Like, what, what was what was the first thing that turned you on to uh, to what we do at I saw Front? Yeah, so I, I I I listened to the to the Tim Ferriss podcast like like everybody else did. You know, the the famous Jocko Tim Ferriss podcast, and and I bought the book when I when I listened to it, and then and then I never did do anything about it, and then in in 2017. So the, the, uh, you didn't read the book. The I didn't book read the book. I just way. bought it and it went on my shelf. <laughs> right on. And 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 in 2000 and in 2017, um, I I uh, decided to go back uh, to school and get my my MBA. And and uh, I was lucky enough um, to to be able to uh, have in in my cohort uh, uh, a Navy SEAL. Um, and, and, and I sat right, right next to him and, and he was part of my team whenever we had team activities. Um, his name's Chris Withrow and, and, uh, Chris, uh, whenever, whenever there was a, 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 a an activity about leadership, he'd, he'd talk about Jocko and, 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 and extreme ownership. And, and, and one of the first activities that we did was, um, when we had to present, we we sh- we presented the good the good video to the class and 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 at that point, um, I was I was hooked at that point you know, on the podcast and on the book and 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 on the whole the whole uh, leadership idea of, of of taking extreme ownership. And your first your first echelon front event was uh, Jocko Live, uh, decisive decisive uh, decisively engaged in San Francisco. Right before the whole world lockdown uh, with COVID, correct? Right. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. I saw that event, and and just last last minute, I, I saw that that there was still some tickets available, and and that was, COVID was start was starting, and and so you know that probably had something to do with it, and and so just an impulse, on an impulse, I I bought tickets, booked a flight up there, by myself. And 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 went up there uh, to to that decisively engaged event and and uh, and it was a great event. It was a great event and and just the the intimacy of of the message, you know and 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 uh, um, it just made me want to be a better person, and it made me want to be a better leader. And and when I was standing in line after the event to to get my book signed uh, from Jocko, is is when I bought tickets to the muster uh, in Phoenix. Just because I was like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait for the next event, and and I can't wait to be able to uh, uh, bring my wife to something like this. And so and so I took my wife to the to the muster in Phoenix with me, and and it didn't disappoint. That's awesome. But it, well, that was the reschedule muster, right? I assume that was the reschedule. It. it took forever for yeah. it to come back around. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we had to cancel all those events through 2020. Um, and then uh, well, I think we, we, we re, uh, rescheduled that one for 2021. That's the first place that we met. Um, and then you've come to, you've, you've been to every event with the council at this point. So you went to, you went to our very first field training exercise, 001, our individual FTX. Uh, and then you went to Battlefield at Gettysburg uh, after that and brought several members of your team as well. That was, uh, it was uh, always, always great to get your perspective on this stuff. Um, and I remember having some conversations with you. And particularly, though, the FTX is when you came to that FTX, your, uh, your perspective always stood out to me. Um, where you were talking about how you were frustrated, you didn't know what was going on. You were just a shooter in the train and running around, you know, on, the, on this mission with your laser tag gear, and uh, and you were frustrated. You didn't know what was going on. And then you, when you were debriefing, uh, I don't know if you remember your debrief points for this, but you you said I, I realized that as frustrated as I was, this is how my guys feel all the time, and I got to go back and actually explain the why to them, you know, so that they understand the mission, what we're trying to do. Uh, and I thought that was a super powerful. Uh, point to take away from from the FTX to take back to your team well that's that's what's so great that's what's so great about the FTX is 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 uh you know for so many years I've I've been a leader of an organization with a bunch of great with a bunch of great 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 people helping me out but but lots of times as a a leader you kind of get in a position where you don't get a ton of feedback it's it's hard to it's hard to know 
it's hard to know what you could improve on, what what you're not doing right. Um, and, and going to that FTX and going through those exercises um, – and then, and then experiencing when you know what to do, but then under pressure, you revert back and you just you, you don't do what you were supposed to do. Um, and then having the opportunity to go back and debrief it and have that little aha moment when you're like, man, like, like this is what my guys must feel like when I don't tell them why the plan changed. Um, and, and, and being able to, that's, I don't think that's something you can learn by listening to somebody. I think it's something that you can only learn by experiencing it through, through an event like that. And, and that, that's the, that's the power that comes from, 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 from the FTX. And, and, and one of the other things was, was in, in that, in that cohort of, uh, that we had at, at FTX one, there was so many great people so many great people and and we had we had the the surgeon from minnesota at that one um and and uh when when he was given his final comments about what his takeaways at the ftx uh he talked about you know how just a day and a half earlier we were a bunch of strangers with big egos all showing up to show people how good of leaders we were. And, and we started running these exercises and there was so, so much chaos and chaos, you know, just failure after failure. And after a day and a half of working together and checking our egos, the relationships that had developed amongst us and the, and the respect and trust that we had developed amongst us was was what what he said was that was a higher level of respect and trust on on a single team than what he had experienced on any of the other teams while he was going to school on his medical teams that he'd never experienced that level of that level of trust before and 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 respect for every single person on the team. And, 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 and I felt the same thing. I felt the same thing. And, 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 and at that moment, at that moment when he said that, I said, man, I, I've got to, I want, I want my team to be able to have this alignment, to be able to have this, this feeling of mutual respect and trust. You know, we're, we're guys, we work together every single day. And, and, and we're, we're working, you know, to take care of a customer and complete jobs, but, but our egos get in the way and, and, and we don't have, we don't, we don't feel that alignment and we don't feel that trust and, 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 we, and we feel like, you know, people have agendas and, 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 uh, and just by doing that one day and a half exercise, this team of, of, of leaders, you know, that were so different from all parts of the U.S., from all different industries, came together and we had that feeling. That was, that was just an amazing exper experiment, you know, that the, the, that was something that I, want, I wanted my team to be able to have. That's awesome. And uh, I think that, that to me is... One of the things that I love as an observer, you know, as, as an instructor there, kind of, and I'm detached and I'm kind of watching, but it's interesting to see, you see people that show up there and they think like, I got this stuff figured out. I've read the book a bunch of times. I listen to the podcast. I've, you know, I've been to muster. I know what's up and uh, they get humbled, right? I mean, and that training is designed to humble you because it's instantly apparent where the breakdown is, you know, of, of hey, I, I tell you what to do, but but then you're not actually executing. So it's clear that you didn't understand what I was trying to convey um, or, or, hey, we're, we're getting overwhelmed and we're failing to prioritize and execute. Or I've got people waiting to, you know, for me to make all the decisions. And people come into there as this idea of that traditional leader where they, they show up and they say, I'm going to run this thing. You know, I'm in charge. Oh, OK, I'm in charge of this one. You do this. You do this. You do this. 
And by the end of that, you see a bunch of people that recognize what good, good leadership looks like. And it's not that traditional view of leadership we might have. It's uh, this misconception that we have, like the leader's the person that barks orders and, and tells everyone what, what to do. It, it's the silent leader that says, hey, oh, hey, team, here's the goal. How do you want to do it? And then you get people that are looking to support other people on the team. Hey, what can I do to support the team to move us forward in a positive direction? And it's amazing to me the amount of learning that takes place in those two days. It's, uh, it's an incredible transformation that you get to see in, in the participants. Uh, and you certainly were one of those. I, I love that debrief point. That, that's always stood out to me uh, as, as super frustrated. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't understand the mission. No one's telling me what I'm doing. What are we doing out here? Uh, or, hey, what just changed? We redirected it, but no one passed the word. And then the recognition of like, hey, my people feel like that when I don't pass the word to them, you know, when I don't actually make it clear to them. Um, and if we, as leaders, we oftentimes think that it should be clear when it never is. Uh, and it's not going to be unless we actually take action to make sure our people understand why, we're, why they're doing what they're doing. Right. What, was, what was the first, you said you, you and your wife came to, to uh, so you and Amy came to Muster right. uh, in Phoenix. What, 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 was, what was your first kind of take away from, from, uh, from muster there? Like, what did you, what'd you get from that? And how did that make you want to go to FTX and, and, and additional events? Yeah. So, so because, because the, um, muster got delayed, um, we, I actually went to the FTX first. So it was first the FTX and, and the muster didn't, didn't go till later that year. That's, that's correct. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I, when I got back from FTX, I, I, uh, so your first actual front event was that individual FTX right. Series one. Yeah, yeah. After the decisively engaged, and then and then I got back that next Tuesday, and we had our executive meeting, and I had a debrief with my team, and and I had a whole notebook full of notes, and I and I went down each every single note, and I said this is this is this takeaway, and talked about it, and this is this takeaway, and and gave them the situation where. Where, where uh, you know, the plan changed and I was in there and I was one of the shooters and, and they didn't tell me why, so I wasn't going to change, you know, and, and, and gave them that whole, that whole uh, uh, and it wasn't until, you know, until the debrief when, I, when that light bulb clicked and I was like, oh, man, that's how my guys feel when I change the plan on them and I don't tell them why. Um, and, and there was just so much content that, that, that came out of that that I was able to go back to the team and, 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 uh, then there was their battlefield was going to happen three weeks later. And so I scheduled my executive team to, to go to battlefield and, and, uh, I stayed home. I stayed home this time to, 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 to cover for them so that they could go to battlefield. And, 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 and the four of them went to battlefield and, and, uh, it was just an amazing experience for them. They they came back they came back humbled and and uh, with a with a much different outlook as on what what the path looks like. You sent a great team up there. We enjoyed spending those days in, in Gettysburg uh, with with your team. It's such a powerful place. Now I know you you've been there with us and and uh, brought your son dig into that. It was was an awesome thing. I wish as I told him I wish I'd learned these lessons. As, I think was he sixteen when he uh, came up there with us. Uh, incredible, you know, all these things that I had learned the hard way. Um, and of course, everyone, everyone comes up to, to Jock and I was like, I wish I had this book 20 years ago, you know, for extreme ownership. And, uh, our answer is always the same. It's like, so, so do I, I wish I didn't have to, to learn this stuff the hard way. Um, so hopefully that's something that can set him on the path, but just having your guys there was awesome. I, it seemed to me from my perspective that, um, there were at least a couple of them that weren't quite sure what they were doing there, you know, like how, how this was going to relate to the construction world. And, uh, they just ate that up and it was just awesome di leadership discussion there, um, about how this stuff, uh, came and, and, and applied and the takeaways that they could take back to their teams, um, and be better leaders as a result. And, and, you know, lead down the chain and lead peer to peer and lead up the chain and, and, and work with your customers and, uh, subcontractors and all the, the folks that you, you have to work alongside. Um, just really enjoy those leadership discussions with you, with your team. That was outstanding. It's just such a good event to be able to rub shoulders with all of you guys, with the whole team and, and, and to be able to talk about, you know, real life situations and then, and then to be able to learn from, from the lessons from history, you know, and and uh, when 
when they came back, they, 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 they did come back with a different perspective. And, and uh, Brock Stortini that, that runs my concrete division, he, he sat me down when he got back and he's, he, he uh, with, 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 with tears in his eyes, he, 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 uh, he said, you know what, I can't, there's, there's nothing I can do to ever repay you for, for this. You know, it's, it's, this has been such, so transformative for me. And, 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 and I feel like I learned so much. And, and at that time, he, he said, I, I, want, I want my team to be able to experience this message, this leadership message that, that, that Echelon Front is teaching. And, and I'm willing to forego, uh, 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 I'm willing to go forego comp- compensation, my own compensation. If if that's what it takes to to be able to to get uh, some some training directly for for our guys and and the rest of the guys felt the same way at that point and and so that's when we decided to uh, bring uh, JP and Cody and Carlos uh, in to uh, come in and 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 do an FTX for us uh, specifically. That's outstanding. What, what are some of the impacts that, that you've seen like in your team from, from the guys that you sent to Battlefield, from the guys that you, you know, from those that have participated in that FTX program? What, uh, what, what's, what, what have you seen impact-wise from, from your, your leaders? Well, it's, it's night and day. It's night and day. You know, as you start to take ownership of, of all the problems, of all the situations that arise, you start finding solutions. And and I think just just getting on this path of of leadership, then then it's something that you're consciously working on every single day, and 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 I think that's 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 the thing that, that Gettysburg did, and even even the FTX is is um, that we that that we did. Uh, it kind of opens the door for us to get on the path, you know. And it's not a destination, and it's not easy, and and it's not you go to an event. And, 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 and everything's changed, you know, we're still the same person and you still, you still have an ego and you still, you still go back and fail on the same things, you know, that you used to, but, but you start to recognize those failings and you start to recognize who is, who is it that really is to blame here for this. And, and it's not till you get to that point that, that the problems start getting solved the right way. The, that we start to improve and it's and it's it's a slow it's slow go it's slow go for sure you know but but i believe that that the the results in uh people's lives taking ownership of their life taking ownership of their health taking ownership of their families to me that's immeasurable you know the value that comes from that and then, and then being able to have an impact on other people, the satisfaction that comes from a superintendent that um, normally would would uh, discard somebody, you know, when when they would let somebody go when they when they fail, but but for that superintendent to go back and say, well probably didn't communicate very well I probably didn't train this guy very well I need to give him another chance I need to do a better job and then watching that guy succeed and 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 grow and and take on a bigger role in the company just because we were patient because we communicated because we trained because 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 we led um the satisfaction that comes from that is is greater than than any financial benefit that we can get. But obviously, through through all this, there's financial benefit too. Huge huge financial benefit. Did you have particularly for the FTX when you brought in uh, our team to run that for you? Did you have some skeptics in your organization? Like, hey, what is this? These are you know laser taggers and these Navy SEAL missions. How does that apply to the construction world? Were there some folks that were skeptical? Yeah, like three quarters of them were skeptical. You know, most of them, most of them were skeptical, and, and we forced, 
we forced everybody to go to it. And, and we had a lot of people that said, hey, we got jobs that we need to be at. We got commitments with customers that we're supposed to be d completing today. Like, I got more important things than to be out here playing laser tag, you know. Um, and, and, and so there was, there, was, there was a lot of skeptics. There was a lot of skeptics. And, and uh, but the way that it's run... And the, 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 the blessing of being able to have Carlos, who speaks Spanish, be able to come and translate uh, all the content, um, to be able to, to deliver the message in, in a lot of these guys' native tongue was, was powerful, really, really powerful. And when we had our debrief, when we had our debrief from, from uh, this FTX, and we had everybody stand up and kind of talk about their takeaway. Uh, you guys could have charged me 10 times more than what you charged me, and I would have paid it because the feeling that I had of, of, of satisfaction, of, of, of people seeing, you know, what, what leadership looks like and, and, uh, and, and, and what, what it means to, to take ownership and, and to, to want to get on the path of, of Im, Im improving as a leader. And, 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 and uh, there, there, just isn't a, there just isn't a better satisfaction that you can get than, than what I felt that day when we were having that debrief. That's outstanding, Denver. You, you, know, you mentioned you took a job because of this leadership development opportunity that, that uh, you know, one of the companies offered you uh, early on in your career. And I think that's one thing that I, that's been – the biggest takeaway that we talk about, we brought back from the Battle of Ramadi, from Tasking a Bruiser, when Jock and I were working together there, is that leadership is the most important thing on the battlefield. It's a critical factor in whether or not a team succeeds or fails. And so oftentimes we see where people aren't investing in the development of their leaders. And I think that's such a testament to your leadership and you know to the, to the guys that you've sent to battlefield and the FTX program that you brought into the team. Uh, is a recognition that you did this not just for yourself um, or, or even for the most senior people in your organization, but for, you know, to bring this into the culture of your team, knowing that if you develop your leaders, it's going, that's the critical factor in what's going to enable your organization to be successful in what you're trying to do. And, uh, and that requires investment I mean, in, in money, in time, um, in, in commitment. And, uh, and yet the, the payoffs are massive when people see that. And oftentimes, uh, there's oftentimes companies that are, that don't see that, you know, there's people in an organization that may follow what we do and they, they're true believers, but they're trying to lead up the chain and the, their, their chain of command doesn't really support that or doesn't really see the value in it or thinks, well, why would we do that? Um, and I think you've, you have, you take a real strategic view of, Hey, I got to develop my people. And that's that, that the best leaders are, are making more leaders, everybody around them. They're, they're training them to step into their role. We always say, uh, you know, leaders should work themselves out of a job. That's what you're trying to do um, is, is build people, uh, make the junior people on your team be able to step up and lead so that you can look further up and out as your team grows. Um, and, uh, and you can get promoted up an organization or you can look further down the road at particular challenges that are coming, uh, at strategic growth opportunities. And, uh, and I think that's something that I, if I, uh, you, you have some amazing qualities as a leader, but that's one that I think really stands out to me is that strategic vision that you have in developing your people. Well, I think it's real important to, to identify what winning looks like, you know, and, and it's going to look different for everybody. But, but, but for me, I've been able to clearly define, you know, for, for Dagan Construction, we've got three main objectives. And, and, um, and we talk about it all the time, you know. Uh, every meeting that we have, we talk about our main objectives and, 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 and how are we doing as, as we pursue these objectives. And our number one objective is to grow and develop our people. And, and that's turned in, at, at Dagan Construction, that's turned into my main job as, 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 as the leader of the company. My main function is, is to make sure that we're growing and developing our people. And, and uh, that's where I get my satisfaction. At the end of the day, you know, that's how I measure if I'm successful, not, 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 by, the, 
the money in the bank account or the amount of revenue we're doing or the number of employees that, 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 that we've got, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm successful if, if, if the people that we have are growing and they're becoming better and they're becoming better, 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 better fathers and husbands and, 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 and wives and they're, and they're, and they're becoming better and more loyal friends and, and, uh, and they're making the people around them better. Um, and that's through leadership. That's through leadership. And, and, uh, and I want everybody that works for me to, to be able to make more money next year than what they made this year. You know, I don't want anybody to be stagnant and to, to just get complacent with, with where they're at. And, and, uh, and so, um, this, uh, program that, 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 that Echelon Front offers to, to, to learn how to, to take extreme ownership has been a good, a good outline uh, um, on the leadership side to, to be able to help me with that goal of, of growing and developing our people. And our, our, second, our second objective is to make our customers love us. And, and, and that one's uh, part of our culture from the very, very beginning. And, 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 uh, as we grow, it's something we have to talk about more because, because we bring in new people that aren't used to that mentality, but, but, but that's what helps us be able to have, have the work, have the profitable work and, 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 uh, be able to, to, uh, have a, a partnership type of a, uh, a, a relationship with our customers instead of a. Uh, uh, any sort of adversarial or contractual relationship. It's, 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 it's really a partnership that we feel with them. And, and our third objective is to make a ton of money so that we can continue to invest in the growth and development of our people and taking care of our customers. And, and uh, I feel like as, as I've learned to uh, uh, really define what, what the vision is and, and what winning looks like for me and what the commander's intent is, it's it's really helped everybody else be able to align behind that and 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 help push to where we're going in the right direction. That's awesome. Well, your your success certainly uh, is uh, is is the testament of that, right? We say there's only two measures that matter: effective and ineffective. And you know, particularly when you're saying, "Hey, I don't have to advertise. We don't have a sales department. You have repeat customers that are coming back to you or recommending to." Um, you know, to, to their, uh, their friends and peers, uh, you, because of, of the relationship that you have and the, and the, the team that you have and the service that you provide and the job that you do. I think that's, that says everything right there. And, 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 uh, I might, I might paint a picture like everything's just great and, and we don't have any problems and all our customers love us. And man, we've, we've, uh, we've had plenty of struggles. We've had, we've, we've made lots of tuition payments, expensive tuition payments, as, as, as we've learned how to be able to hire the right people, as we've learned how to lead, you know, uh, it, it, it still, there's, there's no bad teams. There's only bad leaders. You know, that's, that's the hard part about it is, is as we try to change and we try to improve, you know, you, you, you keep coming back and looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, man, well, the biggest problem with this whole thing is me. And, and uh, and the decisions and the training and uh, uh, the the communication and and not prioritizing executing correctly and and uh, um, and not doing a good job at um, letting everybody lead. Um, it, it's 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 uh, it's not easy. It's simple but not easy, like you say all the time. No doubt. It's simple but not easy, and and uh, and we've had plenty of uh, uh, tuition payments, like Pete Roberts likes to say, right? Where where we've learned a lot of things the hard way, um, but but we're, we're on the path and and we're improving, and 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 I believe that that you know it doesn't matter what happens uh, with the economy. Doesn't matter what happens with with the markets. You know, right now we're in a we're in a state where where things are a little bit shaky. You know, I think I think this is where you know um, when, when when we're grinding uphill, 
that that's where these principles come into in, into focus the best. You know, that's that's where we can put these principles into in, 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 to, to action. Uh, when, when we're coasting down the other side, there's plenty of work and there's plenty. Of, you know, it's 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 uh, everybody's willing to pay a premium for the work because because there's not enough contractors and well, well then then anybody can make money. Anybody can be successful at that point. But 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 when when uh, when when the when the market changes, um, that's when that's 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 when that's the test right there. That's the test right there. And and uh, and and at, at Dagan Construction, you know, uh, there was a there was a concrete shortage last year where we couldn't get concrete, and uh, and they made a poster and put it on the wall. No concrete, good, good. You know, we're not the only ones that can't get concrete. Nobody can get concrete. Let's see how good our relationships are. Let's see how good we are at planning ahead. You know, uh, the, 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 the more difficult the situation is, uh, if we're ready for it, the, the better we're going to do, and we're going to be able to outperform anybody else out there. That that is such an awesome attitude to have, and uh, it's it's the attitude that's going to drive success. You know that that good attitude of oh, it's really hard for everybody. And now here's an opportunity. Uh, you and I were talking about it this morning. They, you know, when we were in Ramadi in 2006, things were horrible. There's so many people didn't think we could win there. Um, didn't think U.S. forces could be successful there uh, to turn that situation around, and that created an opportunity for us. You know, with the turnover from the previous SEAL team that was there prior to us, it said, don't go into these areas. It's Al Qaeda controlled battle space. If you go there, you're all going to get killed. And that was an opportunity for us. Okay, nobody can go in there. Well, let's figure out a way to actually uh, get in there and make a, an impact and mitigate the risk that we can control, certainly, uh, to, to the extent that we can. Um, but it creates an opportunity. And, uh, and I think that's, that is uh, such an exceptional attitude uh, that I know will continue to drive the success of, of Dagan, uh, no matter what, you know, what happens you know, with the economy. And certainly a lot of uncertainty out there right now. Um, you talked about the, you talked about the, you know, this idea of being simple, not easy. And, you know, when you really, you just use the, the, the term extreme ownership depression, uh, which I think is the first time I've heard that term, uh, which is, that's a powerful term. And it's, it, it is one, you know, we were at the council last year and we had these plaques that we were giving out to the, uh, you know, to the, the council graduates. I know you're going to join us for, you know, this year for, for council. And it's a great event, small group of leaders up in the mountains, you're detached and you get to, to really dive deep into some of these concepts and to really, from a detached perspective, think strategically about, you know, where you need to focus efforts. And, and it's, it's very helpful. Um, I, I know for me, certainly as, as for the participants that are there, but Jocko had recommended that the plaque that we should give should have a mirror on there. And it just says problem identified. And because when you re realize that you are the source of all the problems, it is humbling and it is pretty overwhelming uh, to think, man, I'm, this is my fault. This is all my fault. My team's not doing what they're supposed to do. It's my fault. Customer relationship is not what it should be. That's all my fault. I didn't put contingency plans in place for something like a concrete shortage uh, because we hadn't thought about that. That's all my fault. But then when, when you realize that it is, it's liberating to know that, that, all you got to do is take ownership of that and then and then learn the lesson, I implement a solution to fix that going forward. The solution, if you're the problem, then you actually are the solution as well. So it's both humbling, but it's it's uh, it's certainly humbling, but it's also liberating as well. Yeah, that that this extreme ownership depression is something I've felt for sure. You know, there 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 is a, a bliss in ignorance when when uh, when when you can just blame your problems on other people, you know, then then you go to bed at night and you're like, man, you know. These guys just really, they're just not up to par, you know, and, 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 uh, but, but then you don't understand why you got so many problems and why, you, why you can't make progress and why, why you're surrounded with, 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 uh, people that just don't want to improve and they don't want to take, you know, they don't want to take ownership, you know, and, and, and it's not until, until, uh, you, you learn that, any problem that I have that affects the mission, it, it, it's me. I, it, it's, it's my fault. And, and, and uh, every, every person that we've hired, that, that, that 
hasn't done a good job. It wasn't because they weren't a good person. It wasn't because they, we hired a lot of really good people. And I failed them as a leader to, 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 to train them, to teach them, to, to, to let them build trust by starting with a small, simple task first and seeing how they do and then being able to give them feedback so that they can learn and grow. And, and, and uh, you know, we've, we've hired people who have big resumes and, and, and then you're like, oh, well, you're a project manager. Well, here's the keys to the truck and here's a credit card and good luck, you know. And then, and then all of a sudden we don't understand why we lost money on a job. You know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't train him. We didn't give him the tools he needed. And, and, uh, and then you look in the mirror and you're like, man, this is my fault. It, it, it and, and, and that cost a lot of money. Uh, it's a depression. It's a depression, <laughs> you know, it's a depression. And, and, and you're like, well, it, 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 I'm, I'm going to do everything I can so it doesn't happen again. I'm, I'm going to take ownership. We're going to implement this and this. These are the, these are the consequences that we're, that we're feeling. And, 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 you, and you start to grind to, 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 to implement solutions. But, but it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard road, you know. It's a hard road, and, 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 but when you do have those, those wins because we decided to go down that road and, and, and take ownership, um, then, then that satisfaction is there's nothing better. There's nothing better. It definitely stings the ego to admit that everything is your fault, you know, and, and it's, it hurts uh, for sure. And I understand what you're saying when you say depression there. I think the, cause that's, it's so humbling. Uh, but yet the, the, the frustrating thing is um, when you don't know why a problem is happening or, and you can't really identify the cause. So then you can't, in the same way, if you have a medical condition and the doctor's like, yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't know what this is. You can't actually get to the bottom of it. You can't actually come to some resolution. You can't get the problem solved because they, they don't actually identify the source of the problem. And that puts you in a hopeless situation. You know, it's a hopeless situation where I can't solve this problem. Hey, I got a micromanaging boss. It's really frustrating. Hey, I've got a, I've got a team that won't step up and lead. It's really frustrating. Or they don't, they don't want to work the extra hours to get this job done. Or they're not building good relationships with the customers. Um, and, and that's actually hurting us in the long run. Uh, and I can't get them to see, you know, why that's, why that's important. Those things, you're in this hopeless situation that you can't fix. And so there's no, there's never a light at the end of the tunnel. You can't actually solve the problem. And I think that's, uh, you know, I, I, I uh, John Dudley's a, a friend of mine I've met through Jocko is a, you know, world-class archer. Uh, and I don't know if you're a bow hunter or not, if you, you shoot, shoot bows, but I used to go out in the backyard, just sling some arrows at a target. And I would have a look, super tight pattern, you know, in the bullseye. And I'm like, cool, I'm shooting well. And then I'd come out, sling some arrows at the target. And now all of a sudden I've got a super tight pattern, but I'm like 18 inches high and to the right. Uh, and then I'm, you know, then three days later, I'm, I've got another super tight pattern, but it's, I'm way left, you know, I'm two feet left. Like, why is that? Why am I doing this stuff? And it would frustrate the heck out of me. And it, it, it took me actually just spending a few minutes with John Dudley can look at you because he's, he understands why those things are happening and be like, yep, you're, uh, you're, pu you're, you're, uh, you're, pu you're pushing your hand too tight in your face or, hey, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're gorilla gripping your, your bow. These little small things that he just point out and he could tell you, he, he's not even looking at the target. He could tell you like, yeah, you're going to shoot left on this just by how you're holding your bow, you know? And, and it was, it was liberating to me to realize like, oh, this, this isn't just random. Uh, now I can understand I can understand why those things are happening and then I can actually correct them to make sure that I don't do that. Uh, and I think it's the same thing for leadership. Uh, and, and when you can, when you recognize that here's what I, here's why these things are happening. Here's what I can do to implement a solution. Now I can actually get this problem fixed. Doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect because we're always going to make mistakes. We're always going to fall short of the mark, but I can at least be on this path of taking ownership and making adjustments to fix things you know, own the problem, own the solution, implement that solution to get that problem solved and other problems will pop up, but at least I'm moving in the right direction. Sometimes too, the, the solution to the problem is, is sometimes as a leader, you have to end up doing things 
that you're not real comfortable doing and put you out of your comfort zone. Like doing this podcast, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's not something that I'm super excited about and that, that, that I can't wait to come and, 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 and tell you all about everything that we're doing. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty reserved guy and, 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 uh, um, I'd, I'd prefer to just be a guy in the background and, and, uh, you know, to, to, to teach, um, extreme ownership classes to, to, to our people. We get, we get, you know, uh, uh, we got quite a few classes going and to stand in front with everybody and, 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 and present and, and, and tell stories about, you know, the ways I've failed and, 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 and to take ownership of, of those in front of everybody, um, it, it, it takes a lot of humility, and, and the words don't come real easy for me, you know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty introverted, and, 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 and someday I'll, I'll live up in the mountains somewhere in the pines, you know, away from people and, and, and out of the big city and, 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 and be super happy about that. Um, but but um, when you really do take ownership, you realize that if I'm going to be effective, I've got to do things that I don't really want to do. They're outside my comfort zone. And, and, uh, and some of that depression comes from that, you know, of, of, of really, you know, gearing up to step out of your comfort zone and, and, and just handle what needs to be done. No growth in the comfort zone. Definitely. And if you're not, uh, you're never going to improve. I mean, I remember my brother is, uh, I, we both kind of played the guitar messing around growing up and, and, um, I, I could play a lot of stuff that he couldn't play and I teach him stuff, you know, and then I went off to college at the Naval Academy and I came back and I, I don't know when it happened, but some, he became like a world-class guitarist. He can, he's exceptional on the guitar. Um, and he's just a fantastic musician in general. Um, but I, uh, I, he would try to show me stuff, and I'm like, I, I can't play that. And, and he, he, I remember him asking me the question, like, hey, how are you ever going to get better if you don't try to play something you don't know how to play? And, and it was, I couldn't answer the question because it's spot on. Like, there's, there is no growth in the comfort zone, and if you don't actually step out of that comfort zone to push yourself, um, you're never going to get better. You know? And I think that's, that's what probably scares some people about coming to a field training exercise or jumping into that role. Or, you know, they could sit and muster and listen, and that's great. You know, you can participate in fire team exercises, but, but FTX is where, like, you really got to jump into that, and you're, you're, you're in charge. I mean, and there's no hiding, you know, who you are when you're under pressure, as our FTX team likes to say. Um, so those are, those are things that uh, I think can, can scare people, certainly make people nervous. Um, I know it didn't scare you though. You you came after, so after going from uh, FTX to Battlefield, to uh, to to or s sending your guys to Battlefield, um, and then uh, and then uh, running an FTX for your team, and then coming to Muster, then you decided to come to to Battlefield uh, the following year. Correct? Yeah. So last year, last year I took I took my sixteen year old son. Um, to to uh, battlefield, and uh, that was a great experience. It you know just didn't disappoint, and and it's just amazing how, you know, even though, you know, we've been taught the 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 the, um, the principles time and time again, and the mindset, you know, we 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 heard it, you know, on the live sessions and 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 and. Um, and on the on uh, on the extreme ownership uh, uh, academy, you can you can you can learn those, and and then and then you go to battlefield and and and, and hear it again, and and the the ideas that came to me of how I can better implement these principles in my life were, were innumerable. You know, um, I came away with a whole notebook full of full of notes for myself. And, and then, and, and it was, it was amazing. And then the, the, the opportunity to be able to take, take my son and then watch him, uh, just eat it up was, was, was awesome. That, that was powerful. I mean, for you to, 
to think about making that kind of investment and bringing your, you know, your 16 year old son to this, to instill these leadership lessons in him. And obviously on the walk in the hollowed grounds of Gettysburg where so much blood has been spilled and, and there's so many examples of leadership and heroism that we could learn from that. Uh, but I'll never forget uh, Dagan's debrief where he, he stood up and talked about uh, how he needed to build better relationships and reach out to people and take on that cover move. Uh, that's something that even, even after uh, being up at Gettysburg six times now and listening to um, a couple hundred leaders debrief, that was one that stood out to me is like, man, if I had to learn that lesson, life isn't just about me. It's about actually reaching out to people and building relationships. And, um, and, and those are going to set me on the path for success. Uh, it was, uh, I had a big smile on my face sitting there listening to this debrief. It was awesome. Well, in that lesson, that lesson learned at 16 years old, right? Where, where up until that point, he didn't see the point in, in, in building, you know, relationships with, with people that weren't exactly like-minded like him and, 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 uh, uh, where he's, you know, when you're, when you're that age, you're, it's all about me, you know? It's all about me and what I want to do, and 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 uh, and then and then for him to come out of that and 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 recognize that if we're going to be successful in life, we have to be able to build relationships, and it's going to be about our success is going to be about the relationships that we've built, those bridges that we've built that we're going to have to cross later on, those seeds that we planted. And, and, and uh, I'm proud of him that he stepped out of his comfort zone and, and, and has done a good job at building relationships. And, 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 his, and, and he, really did, he really did come home and, and, uh, and build a lot of new relationships that he didn't have, you know, before. And, and I think that's, that's brought him some, you know, uh, 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 fun times. And, uh, um, and, and definitely broadened uh, his perspective. And to be able to have that at, at that point in his life when, when you don't listen, you know, when you're 16, 17, you don't listen too much to what your parents say. You know, I could have talked to him about relationships for days and days, and, and it wouldn't have made an impact. But, but to go and listen to those stories of, of how relationships change the course of this country because of those relationships that were built and, 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 and to be able to feel that impact and then, and then internalize it and, 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 then, and then go through and, and actually change uh, has, has been a big deal. That's massive. And it was, it was very inspiring to me, you know, as we've seen, uh, and even even at that battlefield, right? We had another father and son team that had come to that and be a, be a part of it. And and uh, one of the things about battlefield that stood out to me is that people invest a bunch of money to go there to develop, you know, professionally as you know to incre increase their leadership skills and learn the lessons uh, of history. And and yet, so oftentimes the debrief point is about they realize that where they need to be focused most is uh, is as a, as a husband. Uh, you know, or, or, or uh, a wife or as a, as a mother or father. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, those, that leadership on the home front is, is the most important, uh, that they have. And that's something that I've had to think deeply about to think, look, I, I focus so much on work. Oftentimes if I'm not prioritizing the time to spend with my kids, with my wife, um, with my parents, you know, with my siblings, like really, uh, to, to lead on the home front. I think that's, uh, that's the most important leadership task that any of us have certainly. Yeah, implementing these uh, principles at, at home is definitely the hardest part, and and uh, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be because that's what's mo that's what's most important is 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 the relationship we have with our spouse, and and uh, the relationships that we build and 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 what we're able to teach to our children, um, and those are the those are the those are the 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 lessons and and the relationships that will make all the difference in our life long term strategically and and uh, um, those those uh, 
being able to gain that perspective and 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 start to um, apply extreme ownership at, at home, I, I think is, is is key. It's key. It's important. It's not easy, but it's important. It's it's hardest to detach from those that we're closest to emotionally, certainly, and and uh, and and that's you know your wife and kids first and foremost. You know, and for me, I I have some of the same struggles. You know, and I'm realizing I got to do the same things that I teach uh, here at home. Take ownership of the situation. You know, when I'm feeling frustrated with my my kids, or uh, you know, all, all those things. And, and I, it's 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 hardest to detach, certainly on the home front, but it's also most important. And uh, and you set a great example of that. It was. Awesome to have you and your son with us at Battlefield to to uh, relearn that lesson and see it, you know, see it in, in uh, its impact. It's great to hear he's doing well. It's awesome. Yeah, I look forward to to being able to bring uh, some of the rest of my boys to, to to Battlefield when they when they turn 16. We're going to make that a ritual. That's outstanding. One of the things I love that you, that you're doing, Denver, is is you know a lot of people come to our events and they or they read the books and they they like this. They use the terminology. They brought in, you know, training programs to uh, uh, brought in the Echelon Front team to run some training programs as, as you've done. But one of the things that I love about, about Dagan and what you're doing there is is you're building your own standalone leadership development program within within your team. Um, and I think that's something that uh, I can't uh, help but think is driving the success of. Uh, of your organization, can you talk a little bit about what you you guys are doing there? Yeah, and it and it comes back down to taking ownership, right? Um, as as the leader of the team, um, I have to embrace extreme ownership. I have to learn how to communicate, simple, clear, and concise. I have to I have to demonstrate what it looks like to uh, prioritize and execute. And, and, and I need to be executing on those things that are, are the highest priority. And, and I need to do a good job at, at, at decentralized command and, 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 and showing how that works. And I need to be able to check my ego. And, and I need to be able to, you know, be default aggressive and, and uh, I need to I need to be able to demonstrate those mindsets for victory, uh, and and be the ultimate example. And and I believe that the the ultimate example of extreme ownership is teaching leadership to the people that we got around us. And and so, you know. Uh, for for me, that's you know, for me to be able to win, then then I need to be able to impact other people around me, and and I know that if uh, we can all learn how to um, implement these principles, you know, and and these principles, these principles that that that, that you guys teach, they're. They're uh, uh, things that you came up with, and the and the terminology or things that that, that, that you guys came up with, and the in, in 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 your SEAL training and and in the military training. But 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 these these principles are are the eternal truths that are taught in the gospel. Like they're not it's not something new. These are this is just truth. It doesn't matter what you call it, right? Do, doing doing what what what's best for other people loving your neighbor right it's num- it's 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 uh the number one commandment behind you know loving god and and uh um you know having humility to accept that i can't do it all by myself um this is another way to 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 teach the truth for, of this life and and to teach people that if you embrace this truth and you implement these principles into your life you will find happiness you'll find joy 
and and uh you know it's and it's so it's it's you know, uh, it's 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 against the the natural man. The natural man wants to, you know, puff up our egos, and we want to be able to blame other people. And we want to be the victim, and 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 uh, and we want to we, we want to get promoted, and we want to make more money, and we want to do everything for ourselves. And and uh, you know, this is these 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 principles, you know, teach us how to. How how to how to how to fight against that that those natural, you know those natural uh, human tendencies that we all have that, that, that that's what makes it a grind that's what makes it hard, but at the end of the day the reward is 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 is, is uh, you know you can't you can't put a value you can't put a value on that and and so for 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 me to to have this opportunity and to have this way to be able to teach these truths. To, to my people and hopefully be able to have some sort of an impact, you know. Um, I wish I could say that, 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 oh, yeah, man, we, we're really having a huge impact and, 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 and everybody's on board and, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't work that way, you know. It doesn't work that way. You know, we're, we're, everybody's at a different place. Everybody's at a different level, you know. Um, I think most of us are trying to get on the path, trying to find a path, and, and, and you get on the path and you're trying to improve and you're trying to learn what, what, what discipline looks like. And, 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 uh, um, and, and we're, 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 we're slowly trying to make progress. And I think as, as, as we've been able to uh, use um, your template and your book, and uh, um, to, to, to be able to teach classes and be able to have an impact on, on, on our people's lives. You know, I, I think that we're, we're, we're slowly making more and more progress and building momentum. And, and hopefully we get to the point to where, you know, it becomes a culture. You know, taking ownership becomes a culture. And putting our egos in check becomes a culture. And be learning how to detach learn how to communicate and how to plan correctly and, and how to instill belief in in your people you know when when they, they you, you you come up with a you come up with a with a challenge that a customer has for us and you're like man there's no way man there's no way yeah we can do it let's work together and to, and to be able to instill that it's just uh it's just amazing and to, and, and and to me that's what winning is that's what winning looks like that's a great definition of it. And Jock and I often say we didn't invent anything new, and these certainly are all found in, in biblical truth. Um, and, and they are, what we teach is we're countering, we're countering human tendencies. I mean, the, you have a tendency to point fingers and cast blame. Because, I mean, and I see that in my kids. My youngest is three years old, and he's, uh, nobody taught him to point fingers and cast blame. That's just in his nature. It's in all of our nature. So extreme ownership is the opposite of that. You know, the... Uh, we have a tendency to let our ego get out of control. You got to be humble. You know, you have a tendency to, when things are feeling overwhelming, I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to stop and, and wait to let things develop. Well, that doesn't work. You got to get default aggressive to solve problems or the problems don't go away. They actually get worse. You know, all those things, uh, you have a tendency to kind of want to keep doing the same things. You don't want to innovate and adapt. Um, and, and, you know, we have a tendency to focus on ourselves. That's why you get a cover move. It's not about you. It's about the overall team, the overall mission. We have a tendency to overcomplicate things. You got to keep things simple, have a tendency to try to take on too many things at the same time, um, or get laser focus on one thing and forget about other things that may be more important. It's why you got to prioritize and execute. We have a tendency to want to run everything, uh, and do everything ourselves. That's why you have to use decentralized command. So all these things are really just a counter to our own human nature. Um, and you're right. It, it's, it's a, it's another way to, uh, I think to, to, uh, all these things are, 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 when you call it the truth, right? There is the truth, something I believe in, not your truth or my truth. There is the truth. And, uh, and that truth is certainly rooted in, in, uh, in the, in the Bible and it can be found there. And all these things have are rooted in, uh, in biblical foundation. Um, one thing that, uh, to, to shift the subject here. You know, you're a busy guy, and we're talking about prioritizing and execute. There's a lot going on. You got 180 employees. How many jobs do you have going on at any one time? Man, um, we do we do about um, 400 different jobs a year. 
And so um, at, any, at any given time, we've got 40 jobs going on, 45 jobs going on. So you got a, a lot of folks out there. you got teams out there doing different stuff, focus on things. And I've noticed that you, you often find times to join us on the Extreme Ownership Academy sessions uh, for the live sessions that we do um, weekly. And, and you're in there listening and taking notes and, and asking questions uh, from time to time. Um, wh what, what is it that drew you to that, to, to, uh, to join those live sessions? And how do you find time to make that happen? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not one of the ones to be commenting a lot or participating a lot. You know, there's just so much to take away, you know. And, and most of my questions that I would have, the answers are there, you know. The answers are there. You go back to one of the four laws of combat, and, and any problem you got, you could, you, could, you could nail it down to one of those four things. But, but the way that the solutions, uh, um, the, 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 the ideas that are expressed there and the, and the, and the different problems that are come up, that, that, that come up with, like it's, it's, the same, it's the same things that we're dealing with on a daily basis. You know, we talk about on our team that, that we think you guys have a bug in our office because every Extreme Ownership Live, one of the subjects you're talking about is a situation that we had that week. And, 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 and then we go on and we're like, man, this is the same thing. We were just, we were just experiencing this. Like we were just saying these things and, 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 and we just had this issue or this problem that this other person had. And, and that's, what's, that's, what's pretty cool about, about this too, is, is that, that it doesn't matter what industry we're in. Uh, these, these principles, um, they, they apply across the board to, you know, we're, we're all human. And we all make the same types of mistakes, you know, and and so, um, yeah, I'm a I'm a firm believer in in live, and we've got uh, you know we Dagan Construction uh, right now has you know four or five people that are that are tuning in uh, uh, every Monday, uh, eleven o'clock Arizona time, and uh, um, and we love it. We, we, we really do, and we have, a, we have a WhatsApp chat that we, we chat on our own, on our own channel, you know, about, about what's going on, what's being said, and, 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 uh, and, and taking away, you know, what, what, what are the takeaways that, that, that we're having, you know, that day about the things that are being said, and, and so. In real time, you guys are on in WhatsApp. In real chat, we're on WhatsApp on our own little, on our own little channel, cool. chatting back and forth, you know, about different things that are said in different situations, and. You know, and and so that's awesome. it's 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 been great. Yeah, it's been great. That's uh, it's always great to see you and your team on there. And I think one thing I love about those sessions is uh, it, it helps people recognize that, you know, I think the most probably the biggest excuse that any of us give ourselves, me included, is that it's harder for me than it is for other people. You know, and so people think, well, in this particular industry, you know, we hear that all the time in our In this particular industry, there's a real shortage of good people. Or, hey, you know, I have to deal with this. You know, this is a particular challenge that we have in this industry. Or, uh, I was just talking to a friend in the in the energy sector a couple of weeks ago, was saying something about very you know unique challenge to the energy sector and what they have to deal with. I was like. Hey man, I hate to break it to you, but uh, guess what? I'm seeing the same thing in all kinds, you know, in the finance world. I'm seeing the same thing in construction. I'm seeing the same thing in in the insurance business, in healthcare, uh, and so it's across the entire spectrum. When we realize that our problems are actually not unique, uh, and they're the solutions can present themselves sometimes from a totally different industry. That perspective, because they're detached, it's easier for them to see how to handle that problem or what they should do, you know, going forward and. And what I love about those sessions, uh, most of all, is, is there's great instruction that comes out from the Echelon Front instructor team, but there's so much uh, knowledge from leaders like you uh, and others that are, that are doing these things and applying them and then sharing them in the chat or, or you know, uh, are, are weighing in on a, a perspective on a particular challenge that another leader is having. And I think all the different levels of leadership from the individual contributor to frontline leaders to mid-level managers to senior executives um, and and giant corporations to small startups and everywhere in between and even you know in the to uh, just about every industry the education sector nonprofit sector well you know law enforcement and fire and first responders uh, and military um, it's kind of every perspective is represented on there and it's 
it's pretty unique to be able to get on there in a Monday session in an hour and, you know, hour and 50 minutes, I think have that kind of, uh, amount of information, uh, share, uh, and, and people leave there with, with some specific actions to take and apply and then come back the next week and talk about how that went, you know, did it work? Did it not work? Did we make, did we need to make some adjustments? That's probably my favorite thing about the live sessions. I always love seeing you on there. Yeah, and I, I think one of the most powerful things that, that, that it does for me is is it gives me a, a chance to detach, right? So for, for that hour, hour and 15 minutes, I, I detach from, from that thing that was stressing me that day or that problem that I was having. I detach from that for a little bit, focus on, focus on, the, on the live session, take notes, and, and, and listen to what's going on. And, and lots of times that's when – you get the, you get the better ideas, you know. You get you get an idea from from someone from a, a totally different industry, like you said, that, that that could apply to our situation and what's going on right then, and 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 just just uh, being able to have those times to be able to detach have have proven uh, to be super valuable for for us. Where do you where do you think you've seen the most impact, Denver? In, in you know in the time that you've taken the principles that we teach at Echelon Front. Um, and implemented them into the culture of your team. Um, what's what do you think you've seen the most impact since that that, that time? That's a hard. That's that's uh. So so. Our culture has changed. Our culture has changed as as we've defined as we've defined our mission, as as we've uh, um. As as I've changed, as as I've uh, uh, taking ownership, uh, been able to detach from, um, not getting stressed out over things that strategically aren't going to matter as, as we've learned how to, um, the importance of, of training. Um, we've been able to, we've been able to grow, you know, for one thing, we've been able to grow. And we've been able to uh, uh, have a lot of people um, all over the company step up and take ownership, and 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 that's helped us be able to hire more people. That's helped us to be able to serve our customers better. That's helped us to to be able to be more profitable. Um, and and uh, so, you know. Anywhere you look, anywhere you look at, at Dagan Construction, uh, the the impact is 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 evident. Um, but but um, uh, it's just uh, the the impact it's had on on me in my life, on on me learning how to be able to be a better person. Um, it forcing me to get out of my comfort zone um, has, has made me a better husband and it's made me a better dad and it's, and it's, and it's made me realize that, that I've got a big responsibility there. I got a huge responsibility there. And it's not gonna it's not gonna get taken care of by itself. And and I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm really really proud of my team and and the changes that they're that they've been able to to uh, 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 make and and the support that they've that they've given me uh, in this in this endeavor. Um, uh, that's that's huge. But but I think. Uh, me being able to, um, me being able to be the, the the family person that I need to be, I think at the end of the day is the biggest impact in my life. The greatest leadership responsibility that you you can possibly have as uh, something that you've you've helped to remind me of, uh, and, and I need to, I need even more reminding of it certainly, um, because uh, yeah, that's 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 a no fail mission there certainly with. Being a being a, a husband and a, a father and uh, making sure your kids are set up for, 
you know, on the path and, and moving forward to be able to take on life challenges and, and, and succeed. Um, any, uh, any final thoughts you want to share with, uh, you know, with, with the audience here about uh, it, it, on, on any, any particular subject? No, I just think, I think that, uh, you know, when, when, when I went to uh, the muster, um, I was, I, I started out at the muster with, with a little bit of extreme ownership depression um, going into it because I'd, I'd gone to the FTX, I'd sent guys to battlefield, we had our own FTX, and then three or four months later we had, we had, the, we had the muster and, and um, I talked to, uh, I talked to, to Steve Ward about you know, being a little frustrated that we've done all these, we've done all these events and we've done this training and we made these investments and, and, uh, and, and, and just not seeing, just not seeing everybody stepping up like I hoped they would, you know? And, and, uh, and he's, and he took me over to, uh, Flynn and said, here, you need to talk to Flynn, you know? And so, and so Flynn Cochran. And, and, and so I talked to Flynn and, and Flynn said, hey, this is a campaign, man. This, this isn't a switch. You're not gonna, this isn't gonna happen overnight. This isn't gonna happen right away. You, you, you're not gonna be able to force people to change. You're not gonna be able to, even though you know this is truth, you know, People are only going to accept it when they want to accept it. They're only going to get on the path when they want to get on the path. And, and then everybody's going to be on a different part of the path. And, and you got to have patience. You got to have patience and, and, and you got to keep going. And, and, and I think that, that that's a real important thing for other, other people that are trying to implement this in, in, in their in their work environment is that, you know, it's, 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 it's not easy. It's not going to happen real quick. Uh, it's going to take time. It's going to, it's going to, it's, you're going to make some tuition payments as you, as you, as you still continue to fail at, at, at things that you think you're doing right. And then you go back and look at the mirror during the debrief and you're like, man, and I thought I thought that was right, and that was it was wrong, and and uh, and and it's it's just a, it's it's not easy, but I I do believe that that at the end of the day, it's the most impactful thing we can do is to learn how to be better leaders. The the arc of change is much longer than we uh, we like it to be. That's for sure, and. I think that we say that often is this is a campaign. It's not a single engagement. You know, that's the, the military term for something that lasts months or even years. Um, and, and we've seen so many people that have come back. They're on the path. They're all fired up. They want to cram this down people's throats. So like, we got to get, you know, this is the, the chance for us to be successful is, is taking extreme ownership. And, and yet, you know, it'll be, they overdo that oftentimes, and, and we're, now there's some pushback, and those same people, sometimes it takes a year and a half or two years or three years down the road, and they'll come back to us and say, okay, we're starting to see some, we're starting to see this in the culture of the team. We're starting to see, hear people use the language, starting to, th this change, particularly cultural change, is not something that happens overnight. It takes a long time, and I think the, the, the acceptance that it's not going to be everybody on the team. You're not going to have a hundred percent of the people on your team, you know, embracing extreme ownership and running out there and taking ownership of stuff and implement solutions, but it doesn't have to be even just of a, a handful of people start to take ownership on your team that will start to move the needle and it will start to turn the ship and, and, and guide that culture change in the right direction. And, uh, to where, you know, two or three years down the road, you've got, you've got people at every level of the team that are taking ownership, even just a handful of those folks, they're influencing everyone around them. And, uh, and you got to, that's an organization that it will just run over their competition and is totally unstoppable as a result. So, uh, I think that's a, that's a great thought, uh, to, to leave people with is that this stuff takes time. You got to stick with it. You got to keep doing it. 
and it's disciplined effort over time that's going to make the difference. Uh, not just a one-time thing or, hey, I'll do this for six weeks and, and it, it'll make all, all the difference to the world. It's like you, you, can, you can make some progress, um, but he's certainly there's, – there's, it's, 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 a, it's a constant work in progress all the time. Um, and, it, and it takes a while for cultural change, and that's something to, to manage expectations. I think that's an important thing, and I think we could probably do a better job of, of helping leaders understand that at Echelon Front. Yeah, and I think the, the, the last thing to, to go back to, I think, is, is that I, I'm just a representation of the relationships and the support that I have. You know, I was, I was lucky and blessed enough to, to have been brought up by, by parents who are hardworking people, who, who have discipline, who, who, are, who are humble, who take care of other people. And, and grandparents that, that, that just had such a huge impact on my life. And then I was able to start out Dagan Construction with, with really good people who, who uh, have had a huge impact on me in my life. And, 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 and I've been able to surround myself with people at Dagan Construction right now who make me better every day, who, who hold me accountable. And, and, and we, we work together to improve ourselves and, and, to, and to improve each other. And, and, and then the relationships that I've been able to build with, with, with your team here at Echelon Front have, have been super valuable for me. And, and I believe that, that um, uh, we're, we're going to find the biggest success in our lives. Through, through the types of relationships that we build. And, and we build the relationships uh, with, the, with people who are going to make us better. And, and I've been blessed to, to, to be able to, to have a spouse who makes me better, who, who every day I, I try to, 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 to become the, 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 the person that she deserves. And... and uh, and the, the people that support me at Dagan Construction, um, they they are the they are the lifeblood of the company. They are the they are the drivers, and, and I'm so proud of, of all of them, and and and, and uh, so grateful for them for for what they have have helped me be able to 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 uh, slowly make out of out of my life. Well, we're proud of you, Denver, and I think. Uh, it's it's been awesome to get to work with some of your leaders at, at Dagan, um, get to meet uh, your son and and, uh, and and spend time with you and and it's an honor to know you and and it's 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 once again proof that this stuff works as you take and implement these leadership principles and build them in the culture of your team, on the success that that uh, you've achieved. It's it's no accident. Uh, it, it's a deliberate effort that. Uh, um, that, that you're making to make that stuff happen. And it's, uh, it's once again reproves, you know, the validation of these leadership concepts that leadership is the most important thing on the battlefield and the best leaders are developing leaders uh, around them and, uh, and, and, and making more leaders and making people better as a result of, of, of their efforts. So uh, it's an honor to know you. I'm proud of your success and, and uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing where, uh, where you go with the, with the Dagan team. And uh, I know there's great things ahead for you. So. Really appreciate the, the time here. Uh, thanks for making the trip to Texas and, and uh, sharing your story with so many. Thank you.